Hi, everybody. It's Adam with HeartValveSurgery.com, and we're answering your questions on the Ask Adam Anything series. I am thrilled to be here today with Dr. Janaid Khan. Dr. Khan, are you there? I'm here with you, Adam. Good to be with you. Yeah, well, as everybody knows, Dr. Khan, you're a longtime supporter of our community. You are a leading cardiac surgeon at Alta Bates Summit Medical Center up north of me in Oakland, California. Dr. Khan has performed over 2,500 heart valve procedures. And Dr. Khan, we've got some great questions for you today that we're gonna be talking about all about the heart after surgery. But to begin, can I ask you, obviously valve therapy is a huge part of your practice. Can you share with our, our, our community what it is about fixing valves, repairing and replacing them that's so exciting for you? I think, Adam, that's a great question. I think, you know, the valve repair part of the business is really the art of cardiac surgery. No two surgeries are alike. You try to go in and see what's left or what the problem is inside the heart, and then you move the internal parts around. Sometimes you put in new hinges, put in a ring. I think I like it because it's very artistic. It allows us to really protect the patient's own anatomy, and it has the best long-term outcomes. So that's why it's so appealing to me. Great, and when it comes to the questions, Dr. Khan, we've got two great ones for you from our community members. And I gotta, I can't, I gotta, once again, thank you for your support of our community. Whether it's Mildred Burns or Derek Daniels or Doug Olson, you have really taken care of the folks from heartvalvesurgery.com, and I wanna thank you for that before we get into them. So thank you for your, you, your work and your team. I'll tell you, Adam, uh, not a week goes by that one of my patients doesn't thank me for introducing them to your book. We give your book to every one of our patients before surgery, and they find it to be so helpful, not only for them as they plan for surgery, but also in the recovery from surgery. Wow, that makes me feel great. Uh, it's been a great team effort, Dr. Khan. And so speaking of the team, the patients are obviously a big part of our team, and let's get to their questions. The first one is coming in from Tyler, and Tyler asks, is it common to have a high heart rate after heart valve surgery? Well, uh, Tyler, that's a great question. It's one of the most common questions we get asked. The way I answer that is there, there are two ways to look at it. First, controlling the heart rate, we know, is one of the most important components of having a good recovery after heart surgery. So we don't necessarily want you to have a high heart rate. However, sometimes when people are recovering from heart surgery, particularly when they get home, they're starting to exercise more, they may be a little deconditioned, so it's not abnormal to have a little bit of a high heart rate for a period of time, but it is something that you want to discuss with your doctor. The most important part, however, is something called atrial fibrillation. That can also lead to a high heart rate. Almost 25% of our patients can have atrial fibrillation. Usually that occurs while you're still in the hospital, but sometimes it can also occur when you're at home. It's an irregular heart rate. That is something that's even more important, and we do want to correct that with medications. So if you have a high heart rate and you're exercising and it gets better once you stop exercising, then it's probably okay. But if it's continuously high, we do want to control that with medication. Got it. And real quick follow-up for Tyler's question. I'm guessing there's some patients, Dr. Khan, who are wondering, is, is that something where over time the high heart rate normalizes? And also you referenced AFib, is that something that is maybe a temporary thing? Yeah, so in about a quarter of patients get it. Almost for most of those patients, it's temporary and it goes away. It's just sort of irritability in the heart, but we do want to control the atrial fibrillation because it can't cause a host of problems. In terms of the high heart rate, we really don't want a high heart rate for an extended period of time. Now, if you're exercising and the rate goes up, then that's okay. But a resting high heart rate is problematic and we do want to address that and figure out the source. Great. I know that helped me. I hope that helped you, Tyler. And the second question, Dr. Khan, comes in from Lisa. And she asks, and it's funny because I remember this, when I got home from my procedure, she asks, I had surgery three days ago. My heart is beating very loudly at night, almost like it's beating out of my chest. Is this normal? Yeah, I think what I would tell you, Lisa, that's a great question. It is 
very normal. It's one of the things that we do tell patients about to expect after heart surgery. They can feel their heart beating. And sometimes people use the exact phrase that I'm feeling it beating out of my chest. Now, with everything, that's usually normal. Sometimes when people have a mechanical valve instead of a cow valve, they can actually hear the valve sounds. So if I'm going to put a mechanical valve, I tell patients that you may actually hear the valve sounds. That's also perfectly normal. There is a difference, however, about feeling that the heart is beating really loudly and you can feel it versus a feeling of something is not right. It's feeling too, it's beating too fast. If you're not feeling well, if you're not feeling well, then let your doctor know. But feeling the heart beat more that you can actually sense it is fairly normal after heart surgery. Got it. And Dr. Connie, quick follow-up to that. Obviously, when you're doing surgery, whether it's sternotomy, and I know a minimally invasive approaches are very big in your practice, do you, might a patient see this sensation more or less if it's a minimally invasive procedure or st sternotomy? Is there, do you have any data about that? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, I thought we would see it less because we do so much of the small incision uh, heart surgery, but even my patients with a small incision, they feel the heart beating louder. I think it's a sense that people are more attuned to their heartbeat. That's why they're sensing it. There's no data because it's so subjective, but definitely I was surprised when my minimally invasive patients were still feeling it beat more. Interestingly, I will tell you that even some of the percutaneous aortic valve patients that we do say they can feel their heart beating longer. And really for them, the only thing we've done is a little puncture in the groin. Got it. So at Ultibate Summit, you, you are doing the transcatheter procedures, the TAVR and the mitral clip, and I know that there are some other transcatheter mitral valve replacement uh, procedures. Is that happening up in your practice? Yeah, all of the above. Exactly. We're part, we're part of several trials. We've done, we do lots of uh, transcatheter aortic valves, and we're doing a lot of patients who are low risk in part of the low risk trial. We've done lots of mitral clips, and we're also doing transcatheter mitral replacement under certain circumstances. I think the book is still out as to who is an appropriate candidate for that. Uh, and also the tricuspid valve clips. Those are the things that we're going to be part of trials on at Altabate Summit Medical Center. Great. Well, Dr. Khan, on behalf of all of the patients you've helped in the past and all the patients you're going to help in the future, I want to extend a, a tremendous thank you. Your pursuit of healthy hearts and in particular, healthy heart valves is something that needs to be commended. And on behalf of our community, again, we really appreciate all your support uh, through the years that we've been doing this together, going back, geez, when we hosted some, when you hosted some patient education events up there in Oakland, I still tell people about all the great patient-centric education work that you and your team are doing. So thanks so much. Thank you, Adam. It's a pleasure talking to you. And thanks for being such a great advocate for our patients. Yeah, and so for people uh, who would like to get in contact with Dr. Khan, we're going to go ahead right now as we wrap up this video with his phone number so you can reach out to him. Again, Dr. Khan, thanks for all your time and thanks uh, for all your great cardiac care. My pleasure, Adam. You take care. Stay safe, my friend.